Hello, River Life family and friends. My name is Ah, and I'd like to share the question that changed my life, my experience with soul care, and how I currently cultivate my walk with Christ. So the big question is, am I going to heaven? It was during Sunday school that a girl said, I'm not sure if I'm going to heaven. I thought, what? Wait, I'm going to church. I thought, well, what does it mean? Am I going to heaven? I started to have vivid dreams about like hell, my name not being in the book of life. Um, I started reading the Bible. Uh, the phrase without blemish is repeated often in the book of Leviticus. And my faulty, I'm going to emphasize faulty here, my faulty biblical interpretation led me to believe that God must hate me because I'm blemish. I have a physical disability, so that's how I operated. For the next three decades, I existed with these faulty beliefs that God hates me, I'm a burden, I'm worthless. It was scary and lonely to live like this, and I was exhausted. I decided that I want to live and not only exist. So in 2020, I started therapy at Minnesota Renewal Center. This year, I joined a life group because I want friends. I started reading Soul Care by Rob Reamer, and I attended the conference. Uh, day one is about drawing near to God, dealing with lies, bringing our shame to Jesus. And he asked a question that really stuck with me. Are you living like a deeply loved person? Day two, we talked about family sin patterns, forgiveness, healing wounds, and overcoming fears. And Rob said something that stuck out to me, that he was praying in love and not fear for his children. And he prayed that, redeem, that God redeem whatever comes into their life for your glory. And then day three, he talked about the ministry of deliverance. I have always felt afraid and uncertain about deliverance. And then Rob said, spirits have always been part of the biblical worldview, and deliverance is a biblical concept. Jesus did it, taught his disciples to do it, and we ought to be doing it too. Deliverance produces life change. And at that point, I felt all my thoughts slide into place, like everything just aligned correctly. There was a time for deliverance at the end of the third day, and it wasn't showy or scary. Um, it was personal and quiet. And I wasn't sure if I needed deliverance, but I thought, why not? I'm mom. <laughs> We inherited demonic strongholds because of shamanism. We have family sin patterns of sexual morality because of polygamy and bride kidnapping. Like, we've got it all, so why not? Um, and the answer to that question was yes, I did need deliverance. Um, at the end of my session, I, I felt deeply loved. And that's important because I'm coming from a space where I thought God hates me, so there was not space to feel deeply loved. So that was a huge moment for me. At the end of my session, I felt deeply loved by God. And the message that I was receiving was, there's more. God has more to give me, and I will do my part to cultivate the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And something that surprised me from that conference was the realization that friendship is a gift from the Holy Spirit. Friendship is a tangible reminder that I am deeply loved. It's part of that more that God said he has to give me. Jesus cleaned out my soul and I have space for friendship. Um, I'm doing two things to cultivate my walk with Christ. One is to nourish those friendships, because they don't just happen. You have to make time. You have to text them, set up time to get together. You have to be intentional about it. And then I'm going to keep doing my daily office. That's intentional times with God. 
And when I ask that question right now, am I living as a deeply loved person? I can say, yes, I am. Good morning, River Life. Um, my name is Jay Lee, and I'm with Ah. <laughs> I also went through soul care. Uh, today, I'd like to share a little bit about uh, my experience and maybe summarize some things that I've been going through uh, for a while. I'm 45 years old. I know you don't believe it, but I am. <laughs> and I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. And it sounds like a silly question, but I've always struggled with that. And I think it has to do with my broken identity. You see, I've been attempting to live this Christian life for the last 23 years. I've served, I've led many groups of many ages. Uh, I've taught, I've prayed, I've volunteered. So I've learned to do all these Christian things. But I, I don't know what it is to be a child of God. I know the words, but I, I really don't know what that experience is like. So, so care reminded, uh, reminded me of a lot of things. <laughs> I brought a lot of, uh, a lot of memories back up and as we process through some of that. Um, and I realized that going through it, I, I felt really kind of just open like, to all these memories and experiences. I also remember being really exhausted you know, after, <laughs> after every session. Uh, there was a lot of processing happening. I think God was revealing a lot of things to me that I, I never knew in my past, in my memories. Um, I felt really confused at some of the painful memories um, that came back to me. And through some of the sessions, I think even through the conference, uh, I continue to pray for revelation, for God to answer and to reveal these things to me because I, I didn't know what they meant. You know, I didn't have any knowledge of that. And I think eventually um, God revealed to me why those memories were there and why I had to process through them. He showed me that you know there was some abuse that I suffered in my childhood, in my life, in my that caused scars, not just emotionally, but also kind of wounded my soul and I think primarily damaged my identity and who I was. And I wasn't really free to be who that was. And, you know, so I think I kind of struggled with that a lot growing up and I couldn't put a name on it. I couldn't identify it. Um, I always just knew that I didn't know what I want to be when I grew up. Because you know, I maybe blocked that up through the the um, angry and the emotions, um, or maybe not even being allowed to feel angry, and I couldn't express my anger in a healthy way. I think this is evident also in that same statement that Dr. Raymer uh, shared and I shared also is that you know when he ch challenges us to think about how we would live our lives as a deeply loved person, you know, a, a, a child of God, right? You think about being God's child and what that means. And I asked myself, how would a deeply loved child of God live? And I, I didn't know. Like, I don't know what that looks like. I didn't know how that felt. I didn't know what that would mean. There's a big blank for me. So how is it that I'm supposed to be a Christian and a child of God and I don't know what that means? So I've been struggling um, with my identity for, in Christ for the past several years. I think there's a lot of stuff that's been happening at work. I guess I don't talk to people about it, except my wife, I complain. Um, but, you know, I've been going through a lot of things at work. I was struggling over the last few years. Um, my work has changed again and again, over and over again. And then before that, you know, we had gone through um, some really tough times at our past church as well. And I think I kind of felt spiritually lost, you know, until I really defined what that experience experience meant and what what that means for me now. You know, what does it mean to be a Christian? And I'm I'm not there anymore. You know, I'm, I'm in a different place. So I went back to school, right? Hopefully, and I can ground my identity at work, right? Maybe there's value in having these letters behind my names, and I, I thought that would help. You know, I was like, maybe some people appreciate it at work. You know, the world seems to value that. Um, I actually finished school right before soap care here started as the groups, right? So it was kind of timing. I was like, yeah, let's do it. I know I have finals, I have homework, but yeah, let's, we should do this. And I just, we just did it. I'm really, I am really glad that we did. Um, because as, as we went through the soul care sessions and even through the conference, I know, I realized that 
Um, God has began to rebuild that ground spiritually in my life um, and really try to fix that identity issue that I struggle with in my life and who I am and who I am in God. And he continues to reveal things to me. You know, and I have, I have a degree now, right? And the world recognizes those letters, those uh, degrees, these awards that you get. Um, they recognize your experience. And the truth came to me, a very simple truth came to me last week. And I realized that God loves his children no matter who they are and what they do, no matter how many degrees they have or don't. And God um, does not need us to have a sharply tailored resume with degrees and experiences to say that we have all these accomplishments, to say to, to know that we, you know, He loves us. You know, He loves me for me, and He loves you for you. That's what it means to be a child of God. And it felt different when He revealed that to me. And so through soul care and processing and kind of a lot of prayer and revelation, a lot of these things are coming up and they continue to come up uh, as we continue to process and reread and go through that experience again. So I've been kind of on a journey of redeveloping what this identity and child, being a child of God really means and how to explore that and redeeming myself uh, through God's work and Christ's work. I continue to pray for revelation. I continue to ask uh, specifically for his presence and not just his hand in my life. Right? And that's one line that stuck to me from the conference as well. So we all, a lot of times we ask for God to do things for us, to change things, to make things better, to fix things, to help us, strengthen us, right? But we don't ever ask to be with him, you know, to see his face or to, you know, to be in his presence. And so I'll continue to do that. I'm grateful for that time and so care, and I think that's what I wanted to share is that, you know, my identity is in God because I am a child of God. He loves me, regardless of what letters come behind my name or not. Thank you.